Welcome back to Test Drive. Well, we've seen how the GTO handled the road and the track. Now it's time to see how it handles the competition. And the competition is impressive. We've lined up the BMW 330, the Infiniti G35, the Nissan Maxima, and last but definitely not least, the Mustang GT. We're about to put the GTO and GXP through their paces against these heavyweights in a series of independent tests. And joining us to do just that is Byron Short of the Sports Car Club of America. Welcome to the show. Hi, Tommy. Thanks for having us. Well, now tell us about the SCCA, what it is, why it's a credible agency, and why we need one for this test. Okay, the SCCA is the Sports Car Club of America. We've been around for 50 years doing a variety of sports car, sports car events, and we currently have the ability to certify tests like this. We come out and make sure everything is done unbiased, fairly, and make sure that everything is done exactly properly. Okay, now the tests themselves. What tests are the cars going to go through? The first one is quarter mile performance. We do a bit of a composite road course, so we measure everything that the car does all in one. And then we finish off with a slalom test. I don't know about you, but I'd like to get the testing underway. Let's do it. Next up was the quarter mile. When the smoke cleared, this was the outcome. Over a quarter mile, the GTO was four tenths of a second faster than the Mustang. And the GXP also had the best time. Now, you're nearing the end of your runs, you're in the BMW, you told us that it feels real consistent and repeatable. Now, until we get the data, we won't know the real numbers, but what's your seat of the pants feel about this versus the GTO? Oh, the GTO has way more torque. I mean, on this, when you take off, it's a little squeak. With the GTO, I could be a nitro-methane dragster. There's so much smoke and power. Our first test was zero to 60. Now, in terms of making sure that these uh, numbers meet your specifications, what kind of things do you do to, to ensure consistency in terms of preparing the car, instructing the drivers, et cetera? All cars are set up exactly as the owner's manual specifies. Tire pressures, the exact kind of gas. They were broken in on that gas. They've all been driven the same 1,500-mile course for break-in. Really, everything that you do in this, in this uh, game is very much an exercise in making sure that everything was done identically. Here were the results. While going 0 to 60, the GTO edged out the Mustang. And the GXP smoked its competition. Talk about what it feels like. What, what stands out to you about the, this car on the drag strip? The launch. Launch. The launch feels good. The first, right when you leave, uh, you got the rear compressed uh, from a little bit of power brake. But when you leave, it uncoils itself. All that store energy is released applies the tires to the ground and you get a really good launch. You get a little bit harder launch than you expect. Our third test was the road course, a great measure of real world drivability. Byron, the mad scientist, hard at work here. Uh, now what are we doing on this test? This is a uh, composite road course. It's just a regular road course with all the kind of features you'd find anywhere. And it's purely lap time that we're looking for. Absolutely. Purely their, their best four lap times average. And here's how the numbers shook out. On the road course, once again, the GTO was the king, but the GXP trailed the smaller sedans. Hey, Mike, now you, you finished running all the cars. You're in the Mustang right now. Uh, first, what are your impressions of the Mustang? Um, the Mustang has a little bit better turn in, but with the GTO, you can compensate for it with the torque. So I'd still go with the GTO, but the Mustang has very nice turn in. Finally, our competitors took on the cones of the slalom course. And here are the results. Again, the GTO was quicker than the Mustang, but not faster than the BMW. In GXP, it was only a hair behind the BMW and Infiniti. Well, the GTO and GXP took their tests. And in the end, the GTO was just plain faster in acceleration. Plus, it had better overall handling and performance than both the BMW and the Infiniti. As for the GXP, it was faster in acceleration than the Maxima, the G35, and the 330i. It also beat the Maxima on the road course and through the slalom. Well, the numbers don't lie, but when it comes to the battle between Mustang and GTO, some rivalries die hard. Buckle up for a quarter mile showdown.
wouldn't be a real race if there wasn't something at stake. GTO, king of the quarter mile. Stay tuned for our final thoughts on the Pontiac GTO and GXP. In the beginning, the gods of performance created the GTO, and it was good. Today, there's a new GTO on the block, and it's even better. With more horsepower, more torque, bigger brakes, and a meaner, tougher stance, the new GTO makes sitting still seem like a crime. Aggressive, authentic, and packing more attitude per cubic inch than any other sedan on the road. The GXP is the most powerful front-wheel drive sedan in North America, and a car that's not afraid to flex its American muscle. Thanks for joining us. I'm Tommy Kendall. See you next time.